So let's move on to another example. Let's talk about carbon here. Again, we're just talking about the valence electrons. So carbon has four valence electrons. So if we talk about C2, again, we're going to start filling in our molecular orbitals. And now we're going to have eight electrons to fill into our molecular orbitals. So we'll put two in the sigma 2s, two in the sigma 2s star. And now we're going to fill one and one into each of our pi 2px and 2py, but we still have two electrons left. So what we're going to do is double up in terms of our 2px and our 2py. So let's think about what this valence electron configuration is for C2. And again, I want you to have practice drawing these out in the form you always need to start with the sigma and then write the uh, number of the orbital. So sigma 2s, it has two electrons. Sigma 2s star with two electrons. And now we have sigma 2px. How many electrons here? Two. And sigma 2py, two electrons here. Oh, excuse me, pi 2py, thank you. Pi 2px and pi 2py. So let's talk about what the bonding order is going to be for C2. So what's the bonding order for C2? Two? OK, so we have 2, 4, 6, minus 2. So we have 1 half of 6 minus 2. So that's 1 half of 4. So we have a bonding order of 2 for carbon 2. So we would expect to see a double bond for C2, where we would expect to see a single bond, a double bond for C2 and a single bond for B2. And that is, in fact, uh, what we can surmise if we look at the different dissociation energies for the two bonds. So for B2, which is a single bond, that's 289 kilojoules per mole to break it. And it takes us more energy to break this double bond for carbon, which is 599 kilojoules per mole.